Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bachelor Nation News on this Saturday morning. It's popular YouTuber Dave Neal and noted pacifist. That's right. We're going to discuss Jane Doe here, the lady accusing Clayton of being the father of her now uh, stillborn, unborn twins, uh, which were due um, actually in a couple weeks or next week, I should say, uh, the week after she's suing me for harassment. Well, of course, I would never want anyone to harm her, stalk her, message her, send her threatening messages. But every once in a while, I have to reiterate that because we're in the business of elevating Clayton's story to the point where he receives justice. And if we want justice for Clayton, we should also want it for Greg, Mike, and who are these other guys? Two more now? We're going to discuss that and other victims that might not have been of the, I don't know, relationship, uh, intimate variety. Yes, there are others out there. So follow me on Instagram at dneals. Um, and I'm also going to have some new information on Patreon for you guys today. You can go check that out. I'll have more on that in a moment. But first, uh, if you want uh, to cleanse a palate uh, with some information that's not of the Clayton variety, I had a very fascinating conversation with Mercedes Northup of Iowa. She was on the past season of Bachelor in Paradise. Here's just the opening 20 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, so excited today to talk to Iowa's finest. Mm -hmm. a, uh, some consider her a the biggest heartthrob of Bachelor in Paradise <laughs> 2023. It's Mercedes Northup. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, how are you? I'm very good and okay. very excited to chat with you today. I know. It's nice to finally meet you. I know. I mean, like I said before we rolled, this is a very big break for you <laughs> <laughs> to get into the car here. Know, All right, so sorry. Mercedes of Iowa now lives in Nashville, shared some information about her life, and it was a fun conversation. If you want to be a part of that ride, you can go watch it on the Dave Neal Show or support the audio version on Bachelor Rush Hour. Here's what we're going to get into in today's video. I've got the audio of Jane Doe calling the police to report the uh, subreddit that was made under her name. Uh, so this is obviously a little old as that subreddit's been banned and now they've uh, uh, created justice for Clayton's subreddit. She, uh, she, it's, it's a, it's, it's a sad voice. I, I said voicemail, it's a conversation. It's sad. It's, 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 you know, you feel, you feel bad for her, but you have to also remember all signs point to this all being some sort of con she created, right? That's where the signs point. No, no shred of actual medical evidence of which will show her documents here. There's a lot. So I've got the voicemail. I've got the new documents that show that the hearing is being set for February 27th, 2024 at 4 p.m. in front of Judge Julie Mata. I mean, this this could be it. This could be the end of it all. 45 minutes is the amount of time they allotted for it. It's like good grief. And then I'm going to share with you new evidence coming in from the motion for contempt and how this thing kind of all kicked off uh, in the arms race, which is the big family court of Maricopa County. So I'll share some of that, including, I didn't even realize I was making the court documents back in October, a very popular YouTube blogger. I'm not a blogger. Blogs are the written form. I guess you could call me a vlogger, although those are called vlogs because they're video logs. I'm more so just a commentator, really, but I digress. You call me what the hell you want. I don't care. I won't sue you. Hey, all right. So anyway, I've got all of that info, and I actually have some more info uh, regarding what's going on with this case. But if you want the tea on Monday, if you can wait till Monday, I'm going to have this video for you then, but I've got big news I redacted here, which is given to the Patreon. If you can wait till Monday, you'll get it. So don't cry. Oh, Dave, you're holding out on me. This is for the Patreon to eat. You, uh, lunch is served. Go check that out. Patreon dot com slash Dave Neal. So let's kick it off right now and play the audio of Jane Doe calling the police department to report the cyber bullying of her. Oh, wrong one. Hold on. Here it is. There it is. Bullying. Oh, we got to go back to the beginning. Sorry. Here it is. That's up, please. How can I help you? Hi, I was wondering if it's possible to file um, a complaint in regards to cyber bullying. Uh, we can have an officer give you a call. Uh, what's your address? Uh, my address is... Redacted. It's a long one. Jeez. It's a long address. Okay, just confirming. Okay. <laughs> that's the address. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. And um, 
are you the one being bullied or is it a uh, person yeah. in your family? Yeah. Okay. Do you know this person? Um, I'm not honestly sure. They created an entire subreddit with my name just dedicated to, like, harassing me. I'm sorry. So somebody created a subreddit? Now, I, 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 I'm the type who actually believes she's feeling what she's sounding like. I know people say, oh, this is theater arts. I believe it. I just, I don't know if she's able to understand it's all of her creation. Like this all exists because she didn't get her way. You ever see a kid have a tantrum because they don't get their way and they're just sitting in a Walmart yelling? I believe they feel that dread inside, but I also believe it's of their own creation. Is that what you're... Yeah, with my with my name as the title of the group, and it's just all dedicated to harassing me. And um, I'm in a I'm in a paternity scandal right now with um the with the guy who was the bachelor, and so it's gotten a lot of media attention. And isn't that weird? She calls it she calls it the paternity scandal. I mean, she's so caught up on my content that she's now referring to it by the way of which we refer to it. So it's like it's a, uh, very bizarre. By the way, I mean. It, you know, if you only knew how many lawyers have been reaching out to me that are that are watching this with their jaw drops, it's just absolutely why. We're all going to have to go to group therapy when it's done. Uh, but uh, f she frames it as harassing. Others might frame it as sharing the truth. So a lot of people have already joined. When you say you're being harassed, is it with this? With just the subreddit, or are people calling you, or coming by your house? Nope, just the subreddit. Um, like with the subreddit. Okay. Just sharing. Yeah. Things publicly. And you said the person ready does like she's like so nobody's stalking you, so nobody's throwing eggs at your door, nobody's telling you they're going to show up to your little league game, like none of that. Shit. Then the the the. The person writing the notes is like, I don't think we can do anything here. You're just not happy. I mean, I'm not happy that, uh, you know, uh, Lost had a bad ending. It was my favorite TV show. I want to write to J.J. Abrams and really just wonder what they're going to do. I'm not happy that Tom Brady didn't retire with the New England Patriots and that the Belichick couldn't have made it. I'm, uh, there's a lot of things I'm not happy about, but I don't know if we have a case here. Do you know the person that created the subreddit? Um, I'm honestly not sure. I have I have my theories. I had to get an order of protection against this guy yesterday, and I think he may be the one who created it. So now she's she's her theory is that Clay, Clayton created a subreddit that I mean now Justice for Clayton has about eighteen hundred I don't know two thousand users. Do you think they're all Clayton? I mean I know he's from a big family, but but he's probably the one who did. Okay. Probably. probably. What no. was your name? Uh, my name is Laura L A U R A Owens. So then -W -W. she goes in and talks about all of the, you know, uh, uh, fan theories that she has. But you know, th this doesn't hold up. Okay, we'll have an officer give you a call. Okay, and uh, they can discuss okay. it with you. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. And then okay. she gets what she wants, and she just becomes chipper at the end okay. there. We'll have an officer give you a call, okay? And uh, they can discuss okay. it with you. All right. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, You're gosh. welcome, Mike. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, thank you bye. so much. That was fantastic. I can't believe it. Thank you so much. That was great. Okay, so that's that. Okay, we go from there. Now, updated information. Clerk of the court. By the way, if you like this video, dare I remind you, hit the like button and leave a comment and help keep boosting these weekend videos up the chain. We appreciate that. As teased, there is info on Patreon, but also... There's going to be a lot of movement this week. This is probably it. This week and then the week of the hearing, this is probably it. This is going to be the biggest. As you guys know, I am I am scheduled for a hearing on February 8th in Los Angeles Superior Court. Don't book your tickets yet. I've got a refundable one. Um, I can cancel my flight up to 20 minutes before it leaves, as far as I know. Will she dismiss this 18 minutes before my flight? Maybe. We'll have to see. But I, I, I guarantee you, stick around, and that information's all going to be coming straight to you. All right, minute entry. It is ordered 
setting an evidentiary hearing regarding the issue of sanctions and attorney's fees on February 27th, 4 p.m. Parties and counsel, if represented, shall appear in person. So what they're saying is if her lawyer hasn't dropped her yet, further ordered to, that the failure of a party to appear pursuant to the instruction set forth above may result in the court proceedings in that party's absence. Okay, so anyway, they go on and on. Uh, kind of the semantics of it all. Um uh, if a witness will be virtually testifying by audio or video, the parties shall uh, shall counsel prior to that witness's virtual testimony. Provided provide that witness with copies of all. Okay, so just the formalities here, and here it is. Reply to so this is Jane Doe's reply to Clayton Eckerd's response to Jane Doe's motion for confidentiality and preliminary protective order. Now. The best way to put what I'm about to read to you is someone told me, uh, someone said in a comment somewhere, they've been a practicing lawyer for 10 years, and this is the weakest response they've ever seen. Petitioner Jane Doe, here and after named Dodo Bird, by and through undersigned counsel, files this reply. Okay. Um, in, in Clayton's response, Clayton asserts the court issuing a protective order prohibiting Clayton from speaking to the public would not withstand constitutional scrutiny rather than using his response as a platform to assert he has not frequently communicated with and distributed information to the media respondent Clayton instead claims it as his constitutional right to do so. So what Jane's saying is he's not denying it. To this point, Clayton admits in his response to not doubting that petitioner will be annoyed or embarrassed by deposition. Well, that's because that's what she said. She said, I'm going to be annoyed or embarrassed. And he said, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt that you will be. That doesn't mean it's of his doing. That means it's of her own doing. I would be annoyed and embarrassed if I shit my pants at a cocktail party. That's not your fault. That's on me. Jane Doe shit her pants and she's embarrassed that she's going to have to walk out of the cocktail party with her jacket around her waist. This is just how it is. Is that a cool metaphor? I don't know. While in a normal case or under ordinary circumstances, this discovery might not be problematic. This case is not normal. Conveniently omitted from Clayton from from his response is Clayton's likely intent to disseminate, but not inseminate, disseminate petitioners. De, uh, geez, you know, swallow my tongue here. Petitioners' deposition and its content to his little Reddit army. <laughs> With good reason, petitioner fears this Reddit army will then use the information to create further embarrassing content against her. Well, I mean, if it's true, share your true info. Like, what's so, you know, it's, what are you going to, you you started it. What's the deal? Respondent also attacked petitioner's reluctance to disclose privileged documents while enlisting the help of his self-proclaimed army to further embarrass and oppress petitioner. To the extent Clayton really believes Rule 52 ignores the First Amendment, Clayton should address his concern with the legislator outside of the family court. Respondent believes his First Amendment rights should be given heavy consideration while constantly undermining and disregarding petitioner's right to privacy. Petitioner simply seeks protection from further embarrassment and harassment from respondent's army. By the way, this army, these are people that want justice. These are kind-hearted people. These are moms. These are wives. These are husbands. These are people that have had miscarriages, dealt with stillbirth, lost a relative, struggle with their babies, uh, health and well-being, and and they come across so many aspects of life, right, from all corners of this country and abroad. These aren't people with malicious bones in their body. These are people that see a great you know, injustice having taken place. These are people that see someone who's weaponized the family court system, weaponized of racial tensions in our country by uh, by 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 other means, weaponized um, fertility uh, organizations and and civil rights organizations, and done all these things. Federal Bureau of Investigation, Scottsdale Police, Broward County Sheriff's Florida. They said enough is enough. So this is an army of people that want her to cut the fucking shit. This isn't an army of people that are harassing her. They're standing up to her bullying. And just because there's a lot of them doesn't mean that they're the bad guy. As such, the court should limit the method or scope of prospective discovery under Rule 52. Such limitations are most appropriate in situations like that at bar when the anticipated discovery will embarrass and further oppress a lit litigant. 
Respondents' continued exploits to seek privileged documents must be thwarted with such disclosures being ordered, protected, and deemed further confidential, avoiding unnecessary dissemination of the public. Petitioner has documents she believes appropriate to disclose and witnesses who have stated that they are not willing to come forward as they are concerned with being subjected to similar ridicules online as Petitioner. Unfortunately, Respondents' Reddit Army and his other followers have created an environment where Petitioner does not feel comfortable disclosing information and presenting her case without confidentiality. It's not about whether you feel comfortable. This isn't a safe space for you where you have to feel comfortable. This isn't hot yoga where you need to be at the 99 degrees with your towel and your water bottle so we can... No, no, no. That's not what this is all about. It's about finding the truth. And if that truth is uncomfortable for you, then maybe you can't handle the truth. You can't handle the truth. Respondents Reddit Army has risen. Your truth, the truth. Respondents Reddit Army has risen to new heights, causing concerns for petitioner's safety and well-being. Case in point, recently petitioner has received erratic voicemails on her personal cell phone referencing this case and stating she should go F herself and referring to her as a con artist C-word. The petitioner was also subject of what appears to be three prank welfare check calls sending officers to her home. Well, first of all, I don't know. I mean, she's threatened bodily harm to herself. So any welfare checks are sort of, I mean, I don't know if they line up with the time she did that, but she said, you know, if there's blood on, uh, she said if she hurts herself, there'll be blood on my hands. I mean, these are things she said. Uh, not just to me, but she said it multiple times to multiple people. So, so I don't know if, if you know, I don't know if this is information that uh, that lines up with the actions she's taken here. I mean, so on one end, she wants to use the police system and the you know, in the district attorneys and all these different organizations to benefit her. But then when someone else calls these same social welfare programs, she says it's a prank. Why is it a prank? You've literally threatened suicide to at least three, I nope, four different people that I know, that I know. Three different victims and myself. Three different victims. And all of them I've spoken to in person or via FaceTime. And they said the same thing, that she's threatened self-harm. So when you get a welfare check, that's because people don't want you to kill yourself. Respondent's active engagement and encouragement of this type of conduct from his followers has risen to the level of concern and warrants protections or confidentiality designations being ordered as requested. All the while, respondent's motion and statements have worsened and become more aggressive, sarcastic, and demeaning. Respondent's motions are littered with false allegations and unnecessary, borderline unprofessional remarks. This conduct has become the subject of more parody for petitioner online. Respondent claims the public interest in the case only adds weight to maintain transparency instead of limiting it. Um, however, that rationale is flawed when that public interest rises to the level of causing extreme embarrassment and oppression, and when it limits petitioner's ability to defend her claims and to put forth evidence corroborating her allegations. Put forth the evidence. She's, a, she's worried she's going to be embarrassed and yet still holds on to whatever dang evidence she has that would show that Clayton's side is lying or making false claims. Deposition participation. And by the way, it says petitioner is not refusing to be deposed. I'm going to tell you this right now. If you go on to my Patreon right now, patreon.com slash Dave Neal, you're going to get an update on yesterday's uh, deposition of Clayton Eckert. He went to his deposition and there's a bombshell update. And you're going to get that on Patreon. I've already published it. I, as soon as I published it, I got 46 comments. I, I'll have more on this publicly on Monday. We're just not there yet. Um, so let's go back to, excuse me here. There it is. Deposition participation. Petitioner is not refusing to be deposed. She is just asking for time to allow the court to address these issues. Petitioner will fully participate at a properly noticed deposition in the event the court denies her motion to quash. And once the court has issued a ruling on her motion for a protective order. Prior to the postponement of the January 17th deposition, she's calling it a postponement, but the court never granted her that postponement. Petitioner sought postponement from respondent pending resolution of the ruling of her motion to squash. To quash. Respondent 
it declined. As such, when petitioner observed worsening conduct, she postponed the deposition pending the court's involvement. So she describes it as worsening conduct. She's doing what we call in the sports world, moving the goalposts. And of course, what did Clayton do in response? He went to the effing deposition. He did his part. He abided by it. Regarding respondent's notice deposition, petitioner offered to postpone same to afford respondent the protections she has sought from this court. Let me read that again. Responding Clayton's deposition, petitioner offered to postpone same to afford respondent the protections she has sought. So show what she's saying, I guess, it here is, hey, I want some protections in Clayton. I want to protect you as well so you can postpone. You know what Clayton said? Uh, no, thank you. I'll be there. I'll bring a charcuterie board. We'll have fun. Let's. We'll bring sw- uh, spade and sparrow wine. Um, you know, it'll be a good time. You know, whatever. no gummies. No gummies allowed here. Uh, wherefore, petitioner respectfully requests that this court sign the proposed form of preliminary protection order attached as exhibit one. And there he is. Old Corey B. Keith, the CBK. And there it is. And it goes on and on and on. Verification. She signed it on this day, January 31st, replied a motion for confidentiality. So she's okay being just deposed. This is, I mean, it just goes to show, right? She's okay as long as the public doesn't see it. And she's hiding behind the idea that she's embarrassed. Whereas the truth is, uh, public scrutiny will call her out. They'll see right through it. And and will will somebody poke fun at her? No matter what she does, I'm sure somebody will poke fun at her. They're allowed to do that. Now imagine, imagine if I commit some crazy crime, right? Imagine if I accuse people of all these crazy different things. And I look stupid doing it. I look so dumb. I created false security footage to show that I I I I did all these crazy things. The whole internet hates me. They've created a subreddit, Dave Neal. Let's expose his lies. They want to depose me. You can't depose me. That'll be embarrassing to me. Well, sometimes actions have consequences. So I've got these other motions we just don't have time to get into right now. Uh, But this is interesting. A motion uh, moment uh, where she says, basically, she said, she kept on saying over and over, I will, if we meet up privately, I won't file this motion to contempt. This is back in August. And he's like, I'm not meeting up privately with you. The same reason Clayton's lawyer wouldn't depose Jane Doe privately. Why? He doesn't trust her. What's there not to trust? I don't know. How about a rape conspiracy allegation she made against you to the judge? An allegation she didn't want publicly known. She wanted to send it directly to the judge, privately, the way she's manipulated all these other people. Well, guess what? That's not how it works in a court system. So either way, she can say that she... And by the way, more information she shares, and this is probably the only misstep I've made, is that I tried to play game with her. She asked me to take a few videos down. I said, you know what? I'll take those down. I'll take those down if it gets you off my ass. And what does she do? She uses it against you. A very popular YouTube uh, all-star who got 33,000 plays on a since-deleted post about the paternity case I filed about Clayton just posted this video today saying that he's considering traveling from California to go to the courthouse on Monday to report. And if he didn't, he asked his father followers if they might want to volunteer to could you imagine um if you didn't frame me as a youtube blogger but as a journalist which of course that this is 2024 this is the world we live in can you imagine if as a journalist i say hey i'm gonna go down to that public courthouse to watch a public court hearing and report to everyone what i publicly see imagine if i did that and she'd go well i i can't go in person that's a security risk at no point now she can take it this way but at no point did I encourage people to hassle her. At no point have I encouraged people to send her voicemails and do all these other things. That's not on me if they do that. That is a consequence to her having all of her information out there and being unbecoming to a a group of people that feel like she has wronged them. And again, I don't wish any violence. I don't wish any taunting, harassment, none of that. And I've had to say this ad nauseum. Ad nauseum. I've made... I made 10 10 videos a week for five months. And you know what? You know what? She's found one instance where I said the wrong word, where I meant to say nobody hassle her and I accidentally said the opposite. It was a tongue twister type of deal. She found this one instance, one word was said where she goes, oh, Dave condones all of this action. No, I don't. Not at all. Not at all. And anybody 
listening or watching my content would completely agree. And I don't fear that one word being twisted around because I've got six plus months of content. Six months almost towards that long. I've got a full pregnancy's worth of content here. Um, I've got a full, you know what I mean? So anyway, I will be delivering the news this week. Uh, she will not. Uh, so anyway, I've got these two uh, clips I'm going to share for you. I just wanted to share this. There was the positive HCG test. When they ran it through Photoshop, it looked like she might have doctored the test. But others have said, no, it's actually just a highlighter here. HCG positive highlighter, which I don't know if that's true or not. Although the highlighter didn't show up down here when this was highlighted. So how come this showed up right here? I don't know if anyone knows any Photoshop. HCG QI POC positive. I mean, to me, it looks pretty... It looks looks pretty consistent with not being photoshopped although when you do look at it why would this be photoshopped you know why would why would um this look different right here and not down there but probably just a highlighter but you know people look into these things because there's so much shenanigan going on well i guess you bit the bullet and you're going to join patreon because that's what we'll have the pretty wild information that really helps pill, uh, paint the picture my phone's been ringing off the hook with new sources people are flying in non-stop non-stop on FaceTime. We're verifying people. We're getting their driver's license. We're making sure we know that they are real. And we're just compiling a war chest of people that say she has been doing this, not just with these victims. There's two other men that have, that, that have been, that are, that have no names that she's saying. Maybe, maybe in both of them, were, she didn't accuse them of fake pregnancies, but I think one of the, but at least one of them, there is a knocked up, I'll get an abortion. Let's figure this to, you know, plan B type of deal. Right. So that's out there. There's other victims, like I said, of non of non uh, sexual origin that are talking about ways that they've been wronged here. I don't know if there's such thing as a class action settlement with this. It's above my pay grade, but either way, it's fascinating. I hope you enjoyed this content. We'll see you guys on Patreon.